The book of Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47 says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Father, we love you and praise you today. We thank you for your word. Your word cannot return void. Therefore, prosper it where you send it today. Let every vessel that walked in this building today, Father God, have a heart that is open and receptive to hearing your word. Father, thank you for your word. Your word that tears the enemy's power, strongholds, and every tactic that the enemy throw our way down. We thank you, Father God, that we stand on the truth. For your word is true, Father God, and we live by your truth, Father God. So, Lord, speak your words of life to me, through me, and for me, guide my tongue to only declare your word in the name of Jesus. And we bind every demonic spirit. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You are a liar and the truth is not in you. You have no power, dominion, or authority over the people of God, over the body of Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you that we're victorious. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Before you sit down, look your neighbor in the eye and tell him just like this. Say, continue. Look at somebody else on the other side of you and say, continue. Hallelujah. Give God a praise in this house. As you have your seats in the presence of the most high everlasting Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Continue, continue. If I would say it in this form, I would say to be continued. To be continued. Here in the word of God, as you see in the text, amen, you will see that as the Bible tells us earlier in the first two chapters here, you will find that Jesus spoke to the disciples. And when he spoke to his disciples, he told them, he says, I want you all to go up to Jerusalem and I want you to stay there until the promise comes. Well, the Bible says that as they went up to Jerusalem, they went into the upper room, they began to seek the presence of God, they began to pray, they began to worship, they began to get close to God. The Bible says that the 120 that were there worshiping and seeking after the face of God, the Bible said suddenly something happened. The Bible said suddenly as of a rushing mighty wind, it said the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them and they began to speak in tongues. And while speaking in tongues, the Bible tells us that everyone that was on the outside looking in began to hear them as they were speaking in tongues, hear them speak their own language. And as they heard this, the Bible says that some of them had questions and saying, something has gone wrong here. Some of these guys must be drunk. Something is wild going on. And Peter, under the influence of the Holy Ghost, stood up and began to preach the good news and the gospel on every vessel that was there that had an ear to hear what the Spirit was saying through him. The Bible says that Peter began to speak to them and tell them that the word of God has been fulfilled. Amen. The word that was spoken through the prophet Joel, that on all of your sons and daughters, he says, they will begin to prophesy because my spirit will be poured out upon them. It says that older men will have dreams and young men visions and it talks about the visions and the different dreams that God is going to release after the impartation of the Holy Spirit. But while preaching and teaching them, he also began to talk about David. He talked about how David, being God's chosen king to sit on the throne, because David was a man after God's heart, he was not perfect, but he knew how to pursue God even when he made bad decisions, even when he made bad mistakes. David knew how to pursue God. God made a promise to David. And the promise he said was that your throne will last forever. There will always be someone who sits on the throne of David. And he was prophesying that to David, telling David that the Messiah, Jesus, will be on the throne and establish eternal reign. Do I have anybody in the house that know our Savior established his eternal reign? Well, the Bible tells us that after all this took place, Peter preaching to them, the Bible says that those that heard, they began to wonder, what must I do? What decisions do I need to change? What things do I need to move in? And the Bible said, Peter told them, repent. 
and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, those who heard the word of God, they responded. They heard the voice of God ministering through the apostle Peter. And as they heard God speak through him, the Bible said that 3,000 souls were added. You know, when people start hearing from God and start speaking what God tell you to speak and start doing what the Lord tell you to do, that's when you see a major explosion take place. Something huge will begin to manifest in the lives of people who are willing to say, God, I heard you say change it. I'm willing to do it. I heard you say move and I'm ready to move. I heard you say stop and I will stop. I heard you say pursue and I'll pursue. When people hear the voice of God and and obey God and do what God tell them to do. The Bible says 3,000 were added. I'm telling somebody in here that God wants to add to your life if you would hear what the Spirit is saying this morning. There's interesting, it's interesting, it's interesting spiritual family and friends. It's interesting on how we all as believers, we tend to respond to things differently. Because the Bible says that out of all the people that were actually there, it was only 3,000 that were actually added. So you will find that there was still another multitude of people that were there among them that was not added to the church. Amen. And Jesus made it clear that you could cast four different types of soil or you could cast seed on four different types of soil. But out of the four soils or out of the four places you cast your seed, only one of four would actually respond. So it's very interesting on how this actually worked, 3,000 being added. And, and, and I found that in the text that even after 3,000, even after people hear and believe the word, even after people receive what God tells them, even after people come to church on Sunday, get an impartation, get a deliverance, get a breakthrough, even after a seven days of praise, uh, people get something huge, something major, an uh, open door, somebody get healed, kids rise up and begin to move into a new place. I mean, even after all of this, the problem with the church is that after the Sunday breakthrough, after the Wednesday night impartation, after we drink from the well and get some good fresh water and get good blessings and get manifestations of God's presence, after we get all of this, we stop. This is the problem with us. Is we plead our case with God, we say, God bless me. We plead our case with God and say, God, touch my family. We plead our case with God and we say, God, open the door. We plead, we cry, we, we go before him. We say, please help, please do, please open the way, please make the way, please open the way. We beg God, beg him so good to the point where God say, I'm going to bless you. And then God, he releases the blessing and we run around and we say, oh, he opened the door. Nobody know what I've been through. Nobody know what I came from. Nobody know what the doctor told me. Nobody know what the lawyer said. And he gave him a breakthrough. I'm so happy. But after all of that jumping, shouting, when you finally get the husband you've been begging for and the wife you pleaded for, When you finally got money in your bank account and your car get fixed. When you finally graduate from the, uh, I'm going to say, single apartment or the one bedroom and enter into the five bedroom house. When you graduate from the depression and the, and the emotional disturbances that you have going on in your spirit and you get into a place where you say, oh my goodness, I have never felt this kind of joy in such a long time. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I'm so, uh, I'm amped. After we receive what we beg for, pray for, plead for, cry out on the altar for, we stop. We completely stop what we are doing and what we should be doing and what it took to get to the very place that I am in now. Don't sit here and just beg God for a blessing and after receiving it, stop. If you took all that time and crying and crying and praying and seeking and Bible studying and going to church and doing all of this stuff to get where you are today, you got to do that plus more to get where you're going tomorrow. Don't sit here and drop your guard after your breakthrough. See, 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 this, this is what we do. This is what we do. We're like this, struggling with conditions, financial difficulties, physical struggles, mental blockage, 
emotional situations, relational problems, we're like this. And then God does a breakthrough, and then the breakthrough goes like this. And now we're here because we, we, we went from the, the shackles to a place of saying, I'm surrendered, so my arms are open wide. But what we do is after we receive from God, while we're in this state, we do this. Oh, I finally made it through this hardship, this pain, this suffering, this circumstances. Instead, what we need to learn to do is this. We need to go from here to here, from here to here and stay here. You got to keep your focus high. Keep your praise high. Keep your hands lifted. Keep your eyes on Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. My Bible says this. After the Holy Ghost shook the place, 3,000 were added and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. They stood fast in the apostles' doctrine in which to continue means that they were consistent. It means that they continued or they were in a transition of pursuit, which means I'm not going to stop right here. I got to keep chasing it. I got to keep chasing him. I got to keep chasing the vision. I got to keep chasing the purpose. I got to keep chasing the revelation. It said they begin to continue steadfastly. Steadfastly means you never get moved. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, things will try to move you out of place. You come out of a seven days of praise, the enemy going to come and try to move you out of place. You don't hear what I'm saying. I am positive. Matter of fact, even Friday night, we're in here pressing, praising, pressing through, and the enemy tried his best to move us out of place. We're in here worshiping, and the enemy trying to go into people's cars while we're in the parking lot. And be, 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 be mindful here that the devil is mad at your breakthrough. He don't like what God has just done for you, and he's going to do everything he can to try to stop you. But you need to be steadfast unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Do I got anybody that want to continue? They continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. The word apostle is translated to mean the messenger of God. But another translation you can, you can even say he who has been sent. Okay. This is key. This is key if you're going to build on top of what God has given you. You need to position yourself around people who are sent. <laughs> Stop hooking up with people who just went. And, and, and please don't...